Hello and welcome to a Hobby Electronics Mega Channel video tutorial designed to walk you through building a usable 5 volt regulator power supply that you can use to drive your circuits that require a strict 5 volts. There are a variety of microcontrollers, TTL, transistor transistor logic, integrated circuits, and other components that require 5 volts, and because there is no readily available battery that supplies this particular voltage, this power supply is a must for all hobby electronics enthusiasts. This power supply is simple to build and can be integrated right on your project breadboard, taking up very little space. A few components are required and are available from a variety of online sources including eBay, Amazon, digikey.com, and mouser.com to name a few. I would recommend performing a search for electronics components and choosing one that best suits your needs. As with any hobby electronics project, safety is number one. Though the voltages and currents we will be using are extremely low and pose no danger, aside from damaging components, I urge you to check these two websites shown on your screen for safety tips when working with electronics. The information there is very useful. As I mentioned, there are a few components you will need to build your 5 volt regulator power supply. They are a 7805 5 volt regulator, a 0.33 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, seven small jumper wires, a 9 volt battery with snap connector. I would recommend using a rechargeable 9 volt battery. In the long run, this will save you a good bit of money. And a breadboard. The breadboard can be as small or as large as you need. Personally, I have built mine on a very small breadboard, which I can then connect to another breadboard depending on the project I'm working on. Here is the schematic for the 5 volt regulator power supply for your reference. Okay, let's build this power supply. First, place the 5 volt regulator at the top of your breadboard as you see on the screen, with the bulky part of the component facing left. I have highlighted in red the holes in the breadboard where the pins should go. From this point on, as with all my tutorials, I will mark in red the holes where components and wires should be placed. When polarity of a component is a concern, and when that polarity is not easily determined from the on-screen photo or diagram, I will mark the holes where the positive lead or leads go in red, and the holes where the negative lead or leads go in blue. Next, place three jumper wires across the center line of the breadboard as you see on your screen. It's not absolutely necessary to use red wires for positive and blue for ground, but it is good practice and can eliminate confusion as your circuit grows. Now, insert the 0.33 microfarad capacitor as shown, being sure to observe the polarity of the capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors must be placed with the positive and negative leads in the proper holes, or they can explode. Most electrolytic capacitors have a light colored line down one side, indicating the negative lead. It should even have a minus sign on the line itself. If you're unable to determine the negative lead in this fashion, check your capacitor's data sheet to determine which lead is negative. Again, the positive lead is placed in the hole marked in red, and the negative lead in the hole marked in blue. Now, place the 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor as shown on screen. Note that with ceramic capacitors, polarity is not a concern. Place the four jumper wires as I have done on screen. I have not noted polarity here because your breadboard's outer rails may be configured differently from mine. What you need to know is, the two wires originating from row 28 on screen terminate in the two positive outer rails on your breadboard, and the two wires originating on row 29 on screen terminate in the two negative rails of your breadboard. Finally, connect your 9 volt battery via the snap connector as shown on your screen. Your positive rails are now providing 5 volts of electricity, and your negative rails providing ground. You can test this as I have done with a multimeter. Place your multimeter in its volts DC setting, 
and place its positive and negative leads as I have done on screen. The reading should be very close to 5 volts. Your 5 volt regulator power supply is now ready for use in all your projects requiring this strict voltage. For more information on the 7805 5 volt regulator component, I urge you to check the website shown on your screen. Its datasheet contains a host of valuable information on this amazing component. Thank you for watching this tutorial on building a 5 volt regulator power supply. I hope it comes in handy for future projects. It certainly will for some of my other tutorials. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and check back soon for more exciting hobby electronics tutorials. So long for now.